You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with like minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crown. Specialize. You selling cars? That's why it's so tough. You're just selling cars. You gotta add something to that that makes you unique. You selling real estate? You better ask God in the next hour. We're gonna pray. Lord, give me a revelation that makes my real estate company rare. You a lawyer? So what? Ask God for a real revelation about legal service. Become specialized. The angel said this about Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus. Watch this specialization. For he will only have one job. I'm going to name him what his job is. He will save people from his sin. That's all, that's all he wants to do. His specialization is salvation. You know, that's why Christ is so successful. He stayed with his focus. Write this down. You were created with the seed of influence on the inside. That's the good news. Tell your neighbor, you get it. Come on, say with your mouth. I got it. I had to believe this. Say it again. I got it. Oh, I can tell you. The seed is in you. You will never get your greatness from education. Education cannot give you a seed. Education can only refine the seed you have. And that's why it's important to know your seed so you can take the right education. Your seed is in you. Oh, I tell you this. Everyone in this room was born with a seed. I know some of you don't believe that. That's why I got to prove this. Trees never take their fruit to the market. <laughs> hear me? Oh, hear me? I have never seen a mango tree run you down to give you mangoes. You all hear me? This is very important. The mango seed simply brings forth its fruit, its gift. But here's the secret. And the market comes to the tree. Over 700 invitations on my desk for 2008. And they're still coming in. They're looking for me on a little island seven miles wide because I refined a seed and refined it and refined it and read books and read books and listen to tapes, listen to tapes, listen to CDs and learn from everybody else and use theirs better than they had it. But I ain't got to learn from Dr. Monroe. That's your problem. You better learn from me and then make it better than I did it. Everything I learned, I learned from somebody else. But the way I release it, is under my unique gift. That's why I tell you, listen to all my tapes. I don't know, you know, I won't be like him. Shut up. Listen to all the tapes. It ain't a matter of being like me. It's getting to know what I know. I was going through my CDs yesterday. I spent the whole day cleaning up my office at home, you know. And I get a big stack of CDs on management and leadership and I mean listen to all these CDs and I counted how much I listened to this year 57 by top minds in the business of leadership and management and then I make it sound like mine and then they pay me to tell them and while you watch LMN I'm listening to CDs Tell your neighbor, no more LMN. Say, it. come on, confess it. Yeah, yeah, pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Some of y'all head down, oh Lord. The Holy Spirit already told me what you'd be watching in your house. Need deliverance, man. Cable TV is a thief. It's a time stealer. You got to manage that remote. 
otherwise it'll manage your life write this down please refine your fruit and then they'll find you 2008 is the year of influence if you're going to influence the peace of the world is both influence this is the way you do it you got to find your gift refine your gift and they'll come and find you when you want mango you got to go to the tree and how does a mango tree become a mango tree I discovered the secret here it is Paul says you got to forget some things here's here's my greatest secret that verse God created you in his own image look at verse 28 God blessed you and God said unto you first word be fruitful hey boys be fruitful multiply replenish and subdue and then what and then have dominion over the earth now God gave us three secrets first of all he said be fruitful listen to me before we go God never said to be seedful ladies and gentlemen it's impossible to be fruitful unless you already have seed because seed brings forth fruit God never told man to be seedful he already presumed that the man had seed and by the way the word fruitful there is the Hebrew word which means productive doesn't mean to have babies hey boy say produce something say produce produce comes from life that's why the best part of your shopping market that you go to shop at is the produce department everything else is a dead area if you eat those canned goods they kill you if you eat the ones that are full of seed you have life ladies and gentlemen I give you the secret the first act of God be fruitful be fruitful means that you have to produce something number two multiply multiply means you reproduce what you produce then it says to replenish. Replenish means to distribute, distribution system. And then the word subdue means to dominate the area of your gift. Bill Gates did this so effectively that he caused the entire government of America to come against him. Bill Gates produced a fruit, Microsoft software, then he multiplied it. He then distributed it, replenished, until he was able to subdue the market and control all systems. Congress called him in and said, you got to break the company up. No one can have that kind of power over America or the world. And they caused him to break his company up. And therefore he became a dominated spirit. He dominated the world of software. He followed God's plan. Whoever dominates influences inside of you is a fruit trapped in the seed that you carry and that seed must bring forth the tree that's carrying your fruit and then you must multiply your fruit so it can be distributed and then subdue your area of gifting so you become known for something let me tell you something friends please die after you are known for something what are you known for is the question and if the answer is not one thing, you got a lot of work to do in 2008. I'm going to say it again. What are you known for? I'm giving you the secret. What are you known for? If you ain't known for one thing, you got a lot of work to do. Let me call some names. Michael Jordan, what comes to your mind? Tiger Woods. Oprah Winfrey. Talk show. I mean, what? Let's call your name. See, that's what I'm talking about. Miles Monroe. I never get. When I went to California, they gave me this big trophy one time. Big trophy. 10,000 people in the place. They called me up. Big trophy. I say, wow, it's in my office right now. Big trophy. And this big trophy, they Mr. Purpose. That's all. Not even my name. Just said, Mr. Purpose. What are you known for? Work on something so hard in 208 that it becomes your name. And there's your assignment you will never find a mango tree trying to bring forth oranges 
they stay with their seed. You'll never find a coconut tree trying to bring forth mangoes. It stays with its germ. It germinates what it is. Humans are the only creatures who bring forth all kinds of things. Anybody know what to pick from them? One week, they are this. Next week, they're something else. The next year, they're something else. What, 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 what do you do? What are you known for? I know you don't believe this, but finally. And don't clap. If you clap, I'll quit. <laughs> Write this down. Finally, the keys to bearing fruit. Most important. Here's your assignment. 2008 the key to bringing forth your fruit in this generation number one the seed must first be in the right environment 2008 choose your associations the seed got to be placed in the right environment number two isolation listen to me young woman young man if you're going to become great, you got to isolate yourself from friends. For a seed to become a tree, it must be taken away from the earth and hidden under the ground. When they ask you where you've been, tell them, I've been reading. How come you don't go to parties no more? I've been listening to tapes. You in isolation? Yes. I'm germinating. That's number three. You got to germinate. Every single seed must die. Die means self-discipline. You die to old friends, old habits, old associations, old club life, old friendships, old associations. Cut them off. Why? I am going to develop myself. A seed will never become a tree until it dies. I don't keep coming to too many people. But most of them are poison. You gotta die. I don't figure something out, you know. If you pour and I pour, we can't help one another. So let's just part company now. Let me find somebody rich who could help me figure out how to get rich. Come on, talk to me now. That makes sense, eh? You stupid, I stupid. Somebody gotta be intelligent. So let's leave each other, man. You can't hang around with stupid people. And you young people need to figure this out. Figure it out. Ask them, are you smart? <laughs> Never keep Come here, people who cannot improve you. Amen. 2008, you got to change some of your friends. Change some of your friends. Then number four, every seed must germinate. Germination means you motivate yourself from a source. You got to find people who motivate you that makes you germinate. Listen to tapes, read books, go to seminars, and keep coming with Dr. Monroe. We'll germinate you. You got to be around people who make you dream big, think big, believe big. Let them germinate you. Be around people who say, well, you know, but I don't try that child. That don't work. Leave them immediately. Is that tell you, you, you know you can't do that. You ain't got the intellectual capacity. Leave them alone. You got to germinate. Number five is critical. You got to water the seed. Water means that you constantly develop a program to manage your development. That means you develop a program. You join organizations. You put yourself on a reading program. I'm going to read two books every month. You know, mine is four books a month. That's my program. That's my, that, that's my watering program then I got to go to at least five seminars that are going to that's going to stimulate my interest in my areas of, of, of my strength I got to water myself and I I join professional organizations that send me CDs every month so I can develop myself and I can water myself what are you doing and number six critical fertilizer that means you have to refine and refresh your program to constantly grow yourself some people are poison they are pollution in your life you need fertilizer you don't need pollution may God give us the wisdom to stop keeping bad company 
And bad company ain't only people who drink and smoking, you know. Bad company, folks who got some of you, even your members, your family. Negative all the time. Negative all the time. Sometimes you only visit your family on occasions, you know. Cause you, and you don't want to stay too long. You know what I mean? You want to stay too long. Because they start getting negative. I, 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 praise the Lord. Bye. Go. Protect your spirit. Clap your hands, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to protect your spirit. Fertilizer. I love what... I, I, I think I heard Les Brown say this. He said, he said, there are people who add to you, subtract from you, multiply you or divide you you got to choose the ones who add to you and multiply you and avoid those who divide you and subtract to you find your subtraction friends and then leave them alone number seven you need sunshine you know if you're going to develop this fruit tree you need special networking that means you begin to network with organizations and people who become your light and that's especially the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ your Savior and your Father in Heaven and good friends in the body of Christ and professional people who can lead you to higher ground you want to network with people who can get you where you want to go yeah folks who ain't doing nothing always want you to do it with them people who ain't going nowhere want you to go with them you gotta decide who gonna be my networks this year review your network and see if your net is working it may be a snag it may be holding you down number eight this one we, we don't like this one pruning if you go in to develop your fruit there will be pruning pruning means you got to cut off some people cut off some behaviors cut off some habits cut off some practices cut off some situations you got to cut off some opportunities got to cut off all maybe some of those things you are involved in now like different groups and organizations cut them off why because they could be hell holding back your growth you got to manage the people in your life know when to leave people oh jesus have mercy i said know when to leave people you know when it's time to leave that's when they start becoming a distraction by the way you can outgrow your friends when you start growing and your friends ain't growing you can become a misfit so you got no one to leave when you start talking stuff they don't understand it it's time to leave because now you already outgrow them you got to manage the people manage circumstances manage problems and number nine and this one is so important time when you put a seed in the ground you can't force it to grow it takes time ladies and gentlemen if you're gonna make and maximize 208 as your best year you're gonna have to use your time wisely and don't rush it you gotta accept the process like Pastor Richard says, the process is necessary for purpose to be fulfilled. Your process takes time. You can't rush success, but you can guarantee it. And the last one, young people write this down in capital letters, patience. You know, when you start working with a tree, you plant a, a seed, you got to be patient. I remember when I was in kindergarten school, we had our first biology class I don't know if they call it biology class then but they the little kids you know they made us put a bean in a cup anybody had that that thing they put a little soil in the cup and they made us put a little bean in the cup you know we little kids you know we excited and the teacher says okay when you put the bean in the cup and you leave it there and you water it it's gonna turn into a tree and me I was excited they said now take it home and then you're gonna bring it back after two weeks and you take a look at it and see how far it's gone Man, every day I went, dig that thing up, check it out, see if it's growing. I went and dig it up, oh, it ain't growing yet, cover it back up. And I kept going to check every week, just every day, checking to see, and mine never grew. No patience. No patience. You wonder why you're not growing? 
of patience. The pastor Miles said, do this, and it ain't happened to me yet. Pastor Miles said, do this, and it ain't happened to me yet. Patience. I didn't get here yesterday. Hit that word I got there? Delayed gratification. That's why there's so much crime in the Bahamas. Number 10 is why there's crime. People want instant success. They don't want to work to pay for a CD player. They want to break into your house and get it instantly. It's called crime. They don't want to work and save money put in the bank. They want to just rob the bank. Delay gratification? No, they can't handle it. Okay, I know you're tired of being in school, but hang on, finish them two years, baby. I know you want to quit right now and that evening school is so tough and trying to get the kids and cook. Hey, hang on there, go for it. Go back to evening school. Delay the gratification. Because all trees need patience. One thing with the tree though, when you see it finished, big stately strong tree it just stands there and the winds blow and the waters beat it hurricanes come and it just stands there because of number 10 patience I I taught you tonight right into 208 2008 I taught you right into it. Why? Because God has brought you over with a new attitude. Turn all the lights up, please. Turn the lights up, please. I want to do something before we leave here tonight. How many of you heard the voice of God tonight in your own yeah, did you hear it? Do you, do you know what you need to do now? Yes. All right. Now, the Bible says, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The word heart means mind. In other words, don't walk around just saying, well, that's for them other people, ain't for me. Don't harden your mind. God sent us here tonight, all of us. To reconnect to what makes you influential. And 2008 is the year of influence. So I challenge you to organize yourself, prioritize your life, and then discipline your life. And that's what we need to do. I have, can I see that, that paint, that book there at the bottom? I did something here. I put together a, a planning book. For everybody and it tells you how to plan your life like I plan mine how to discipline your life and the back it tells you how to write down all your goals and everything for 2008 these are available for you as long as supplies last do something practical first ask God to show you your gift your strength your unique gift we can pray for that in a minute matter of fact I'm gonna pray a special prayer over you tonight that God is going to supernaturally reveal your gift to you while you sleep tonight Amen. that God is going to give you like Joseph he's gonna give you a vision of angels descending and ascending revealing to you what your gift is that makes you a power of influence and you could be born in Bain town in a wooden house in the lowest part of the world but in that place humble beginnings qualify you for greatness it doesn't matter where you were born it's what you were born with we want to organize our lives prioritize our lives and God will give us the power to discipline our lives to die for something I want us to pray and ask God to help us to, to dream big next year. This year, rather. I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and tell them, don't die with my gift. Tell your neighbor, I want to know what you specialize in. Tell your neighbor, find your gift. 
for my sake. Jesus. Two thousand and eight. It's a year of influence. God spoke to my heart. He says, I want you to transform every society you go in, beginning with the Bahamas, by engaging the system. I want you to confront the system. And I want you to infiltrate the system. And you will do this through influence. And we transform our countries. We got to engage it. We must infiltrate it. And we're going to have to confront it. We must do it with the power of influence. And your gift is the key. Your gift is the key. Thank you for listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, where we are cultivating a kingdom community. Please sign up for our podcast, download, like, and share. Look for us on your social media platforms. If you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com.